Welcome to Venture Forward. It's mid-June 2023 and I am in Southern California. In this episode, I'm off to visit Agile Off-Road, which is a company that outfits adventure vans located in Santee, California. I'm heading out there because I do a lot of business with the company. I like their stuff. Our Winnebago Revel has their suspension. It has their air compressor mount. It has their differential cover, and they're only a five and a half hour drive from my home in southern Arizona, so I wanted to see their operation in person, and I could use their help. So I'm going to head over there and spend a couple nights boondocking in the van in their parking lot. I haven't been there before, but this company caters very much to van enthusiasts, and there are a lot of enthusiasts who live in their vehicles full time, so they made it perfectly clear that they welcome boondocking in their parking lot if you're a customer or a prospective customer. In fact, they treat you with Wi-Fi, they have bagels and coffee available for you in the morning, they have cold beverages, and they also have a washer and dryer. So if you're living on the road or made an extended trip out to Agile for van upgrades, just stay in their parking lot. Honestly, it sounds great. I'm gonna have them install their shear brackets for their rear shocks. The shear brackets are a bolt-on modification that provides sturdier reinforced mounting points for the rear shocks. Supposedly, and I don't have first-hand experience with this, but the upper rear shock bolts that bolt into the frame, they're a potential weak link in the suspension system. That bolt is threaded directly into the side of the frame and it's prone to pivoting under load, wallowing and it could potentially rip the threads right out of the frame which is a pain in the butt to repair. These shear brackets are a simple enough modification, they're completely bolt-on and they should eliminate the possibility of that happening. While they've got it apart I'm also going to have them upgrade the rear shocks. They've got a beefier model available for some improved dampening. So this should be interesting. Agile off-road in Santee, California. Hey, Chris. Hey, Nathan. Nathan, Nathan, I'm, Nathan uh, I'm a content creator, so I've, thanks. I've got, <laughs> uh, I'm usually encumbered with cameras. Um, I, John said that I could record the modification to the van, and I don't want to be disruptive. John so. says a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted now to hang out, man. <laughs> introduce myself, and uh, and I, I hate to hover, you know, because I'm also a customer, so I don't hover want to be as disruptive. Much as you want. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get her done. You can film anything and everything that you want as long as John's okay with it. Yep. Yeah. All we ask is that you like keep license plates and things like that of other vehicles out of it. Oh, okay. If you could just shadow those out or something when you're doing your editing. Yeah, good call. Why don't you just do a test drive and, you know, before and after so that you... Uh, you want yeah. a standard test drive or the fun test no, drive? No, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and go do that if, right. you, if you have time. Yeah, I do. So we look for excessive body roll that would indicate that a, a bushing like a sway bar is worn, any clunking. There's a little like rain ditch in here that we, we try to go in and out of. Kick on the traction control a little bit. <laughs> Into the dip. Up and over the jump. Fantastic. And then hard on the brakes over this little bump. And you can feel the ABS chatter a little bit yeah, right there. Yeah. When you're engineering new products for race cars or vans or anything, you're always just moving the weak point around. Uh -huh. You have to find a happy medium between so strong that it breaks something else and fixing your problem, right? Yeah, so we, yeah. we try to break it a dozen times before we call it good enough to sell. And if we can't break it anymore and it's not breaking anything else, then we've done our job and it's ready for market. What can I expect in the difference with the new rear shocks versus what, we, what we're running now? So they're gonna dampen a lot better at higher speeds uh -huh. without losing anything in the low speed ride quality. So okay. we're doing 50 miles an hour we were before this little last turn. 
50, 60 miles an hour, all those potholes, it's gonna soak up that that depression, that dip, and then the lip that comes up the other side of it a lot better. Okay. But at low speed, you're not gonna get a crashing, thudding, like hard shock feel. Because if you drive over that at low speed, it's a, oh, if you have a really stiff shock. Yeah. These have a, a really nice uh, digressive valving to them that lets you work good at higher speeds, but not lose any low speed quality. super planted there yeah before it compressed a lot more so it's not rough on the highway at all even with that much larger shock that's what i love about the 2.5s is that they're a little firmer down low but at high speed they just they feel just like the 2.0 yeah and i like that little bit of firmer ride at the back like if, if we can find a good dip to go through where where the back like really wants to compress that's where you're really going to feel it yeah speed. is this your back bracket preventative to to just fix a weak link in the shock mounting system it is, it's a correcting a design flaw. And from the Mercedes standpoint, it really isn't a design flaw because they put such a soft shock on there that yeah. the bolt is never under any real stress or risk. When you put a real shock absorber on there, like a Fox or even the, the Van Compass stuff, they put so much force, so much load against that bolt that it works like a lever and you're just constantly moving up and down against the head of that bolt yeah. and the body of that bolt. When the bolt is left loose during install, yeah, and it'll usually take the front the threads out of the frame, yeah, because it's and then it's, it's not a real mess. Yeah, it's not a through bolt situation. It's a, a blind blind hole, so it goes through and into a threaded section of the frame. And if there's any slop to it, or if they're installed without Loctite, that constant lever action wiggles it and wiggles it, and wiggles it. Once it starts to back out, all those threads are taking all that load, and it's just stripping itself out. So we've had to drill and through bolt the frames. Yeah. Excellent. Well, this feels great. Thank you, Nathan. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. My visit with Agile Off-Road is complete and the van feels great. It's much better planted in the rear and those shear brackets add a lot of peace of mind. This sounds like promotion, but I assure you it's coming from me. I don't have a paid relationship with Agile. In my travels over the past six years, I've experienced a lot of different shops, both aftermarket outfitters and general service. I have favorites like OK Four Wheel Drive in New Jersey, with whom I do have a paid relationship, but I'm being sincere. Summit 4x4 in Prescott, Arizona, and after this week I'm adding Agile Off-Road to that short list of preferred outfitters. They all have the same things in common, quality, well thought out gear, professionalism, and passion for what they do. 
The passion is a big one, and this is true for any shop. If they're as excited about your vehicle as you are, then you can likely count on them to do good work. And after this experience, I now have a laundry list of modifications that I'd like to make to the van. In fact, if you're a van owner and you come to Agile, you'll probably be like, I need that, I need that, I need that, and things could get expensive, I'm sorry. Last night, John, one of the owners of Agile Off-Road, treated me to one of his favorite campsites here in the mountains. I'm at 6,000 feet, so temperatures are a little bit cooler. We have blue skies, morning sun, and some flies. John already head out, and I'm about to do the same because I have a six-hour drive back home. But I'm putting a lot of thought into how I'm going to edit this episode, so if this is a little bit shorter than usual, it's for a good reason. I'm going to break it up into two parts because the second part is a fairly interesting topic and I feel like it should stand alone. So yesterday we took three different Sprinter vans out into the field to compare their four-wheel drive systems. We took my Revel, which is built on a 2020 model year chassis. We took John's Revel, which is also a 2020, but it's equipped with an ARB air locker in the rear axle. And also a brand new 2023 Sprinter that features the new power plant and all-wheel drive system. We threw all three vans with their different equipment at a technical obstacle to see how each one fared. And the results were pretty interesting. So look forward to that next week. In the meantime, I'm going to head home and start editing this video. Thanks for watching, and see you again next week.